Hello everyone, my name is Mumbles, and this is Killing Floor 2. We're back with some more dailies. I actually need to make a confession, I kind of kind of forgot to, to do this, so so I actually got in the game and, and killed three alpha clones, and then I remembered, like, oh crap, I gotta record some stuff, so so we're here. But uh, yeah, we gotta do Netherhold on Suicidal. This is uh, one of the event maps. I'm not, like, the world's biggest fan of it, because, again, it has, like, one useful position. And this is not it, by the way. We're being chased into, like, the most awful spots in the whole map. At least, like, they're not currently flanking us, so that is that. Uh, but yeah, this is a cool-looking map, not that much, like, fun to play. It does have, like, a bunch of, you know, kind of cool secrets. A lot of the walls are actually destructible. A lot of the, the secret stuff is marked by, like, a purple glow. So if you see that stuff, then, uh, you know, maybe try to figure out how to open it. I thought this room was normally, like, closed off, but maybe they broke through at the beginning of the game. We're kind of back in, in the starting position, I believe. Or at least one of the starts. Yeah, so I think there was a, an event achievement to try to get into this room. Uh, I can show you how to get in there, basically, but obviously it's kind of too late for the, the Chivo at this stage of the game. I will say that it's, like, one of the worst maps in terms of being overrun, because it has kind of the same problem as a lot of, a lot of the more indoors maps. Where, like, you have to run into hallways, and then if stuff has already spawned in the hallway, then you're kind of boned, because you don't really have a, a way to get through. So essentially, if you leave at the wrong time, you might just basically sign your own, like, death... death certificate. But, I mean, we made it out alive this time, so I guess I can't complain. I believe the weapon we need to use is the bullpup, which is why I'm playing Commando in the first place. And I don't really mind, because at least it means we get some XP, although um, currently we are leveling from level 22 to level 23, which is just very, very tedious because of the amount of XP that you need and the lack of XP modifiers. You know, prestige actually speeds up the process quite a bit. I'm just going to check. Like, yeah, it is the bullpup. I don't want to buy the wrong thing. Normally I would buy this gun anyway, because it's quite fun. But yeah, we can run around a little bit and showcase, like, some of the, the cool designs. So as you can see, those doors are marked with, like, the purple little glow. Um, the spooky glow. Patent pending. You can open it by getting this switch. This also, I believe, was the second part of that achievement. So after a little bit of delay, they, they open up. There's, like, an ammo box in there, and it, it looks kind of cool. I suppose you could also maybe make an argument that it's a holdout position. I would argue that it's not. This was definitely an achievement, and this took me the longest to find, because, you know, like, this is a cool-looking spot with all the goop. Uh, but I never noticed this wall, but you can actually break this wall. And funnily enough, with enough people, I think this spot kind of works in the early waves. We're not gonna try that now, because I'm literally one man with one gun, and there's 41 of them. I also don't like this room, incidentally, so I think we're kind of messed up anyway. I didn't switch the, the firing mode, I need to do that. Yeah, normally I would say that I don't like this room for the exact reason that you're seeing now, which is they spawn, like, up top there, and they, they just keep dropping down. And it gets, like, really hard to manage as time goes on. They also have, like, two other exits, basically, they can come out of. We might actually pull back into the, the hidden chamber, because it actually might be better than, than this position. I probably should not have thrown that grenade, actually, because that's damage I'm not dealing with this gun. I mean, I'll probably need two waves anyway to, to get it, so I guess it's okay. I think we're already having some quarter pounds, which I'm not very happy about, especially in this in this spot over here. Also, I'm just a commando, and we literally only have... Well, I guess we could have two grenades if we, you know, are fast enough to pick up that ammo box. Don't think I see the tank on that guy from this angle, which is quite sad. Bloats are just, like, line-breaking for them at the moment, which is very frustrating. Yeah, we, we might, like, be bone here, to be honest, because so much stuff is just breaking through. Like, this wave was so front-loaded with all the meat. And there's still another bloat alive, I swear to god. Of course he still gets to vomit. Of course. Joy of joys, there's more bloats. Okay, so apparently, like, there was no quarter pound. I don't know what I heard. It's just, like, all the bloats in the, the unknown universe, essentially. Incidentally, that does mean that we have the, the damage achievement, which is quite remarkable, because that means that was 7,000 damage we just dealt, even though we threw, like, what, two grenades? 
one thing I will mention, because that map, like, that area of the map is supposed to be hidden, you don't get arrows when you're in there. So at the end of the wave, you need to remind your friends to, like, come out, basically, and run out and get, get your stuff. I'm kind of happy, though, that we can switch off of this gun now. Oh, uh, I also have a confession to make. I don't really know if we'll be able to do this as Commando, because Commando is notoriously bad against bosses, in my experience. And we will have to kill the boss to finish the map, so... That's going to be tough in that regard. I'm very tempted by the the actual grenade rifle, even though normally I'd grab... You know what? Let's try this. Like, this is the time to experiment, I feel. I feel like this might be the right time to, to experiment a little bit. Because I'm thinking, like, grenades are really cool, but... With the M16, but the problem is that we will also just die. We're taking a lot of damage all the time. Uh, there is one really good hidden spot. I'm trying to locate it now, but for some reason I've lost my bearing a little. It's this room right here. So this this is kind of a really nice spot, actually. I'm, I'm a big fan of this one. Um, you can you can do some fun things in here. It does have a spawner. Again, it is it is a map, I believe, added to the game in the, the last, let's say, like, year or so. The recurring theme of maps that were recently added is there's just a lot of spawn points and you cannot proximity block them. Like, stuff still spawns because the, the spawn points go into the walls, like, pretty deep. This is kind of why I wanted the grenade rifle, so that we can not panic so much and deal with the trash. The big stuff is going to be annoying and, you know, that's something we gotta contend with, essentially. Should have killed that a little earlier, to be honest. But it is what it is. If we have an opportunity to leave, I would take it. Very, very nice. So we have essentially a bloat and a flesh pound. I have like three grenades for the flesh pound. I'm still going to use one on this guy. I would have hoped that maybe they, they pile up a little bit more. What's his health at? I think he's going to go down soon. Honestly, that went pretty well, all things considered. And it's all thanks to the fact that we had the grenade rifle. So we could kind of, you know, do this nice, nice and precise. And without freaking freaking the hell out. That's always a plus. I believe we will now just essentially get our second gun, which is going to be the M16, so that hopefully we have a, be a much better time dealing with the flesh pawns. There's also a spot that you can get into here. There's like an entire area you can open up this way, which is a lot of fun. And then you can open this part up, basically. Uh, and then there's a way outside, which is quite sweet. You could also open this up. I don't know if the Zeds open this up when you're holding out in these positions. Um, I haven't run into that if, you know, if it happens. But the way you get into the, the other spot is by, like, breaking this thing and then dropping down. You only get to do this once, uh, which is something I mention primarily because... Like, it's a great way to exit that room we were just in, but you only get to do it once, unfortunately. After you, you make this initial leap with it, I think that little hole gets, like, closed up somehow, and you basically can't use it anymore, which is quite a bit of a shame, because it is very cool. It's a very stylish way to leave, anyway. Oh, look, rioters. I would have loved to have more of those yesterday. I mean, you know, in their defense, we are on suicidal. Like, they spawn a lot more on this difficulty. My accuracy is just awful, but, you know, I can... I can tell myself that it's because I have a fully automatic gun. And it's not because I suck. It's probably both, to be honest, but, you know. Anything that I can tell myself to feel better, I will tell myself, because the battle is in the mind. I thought that was kind of sweet. We're just being juggled, apparently. One of them is dead now, so that is solid. We're back in, like, another not-great position in the form of this, like, chapel. Not the world's biggest fan. Is there anything to... Extend? I guess I could have... Yeah, I can extend with that guy, and... Well, no, he's probably too tough. I'm actually just gonna heal myself, like that. I keep, like, a medic grenade, because we are getting, like, overwhelmed with the small stuff. I mean, we're kind of getting overwhelmed by everything right now. So I, I'd rather keep the small stuff out of my mind. I can't believe that we have been unable to kill that quarter pound, but I know exactly why, though. Essentially, the problem has been that I've not switched to the gun that I basically said I would use on them. But then I kind of panicked. 
and it shows. I used most of my ammo, and I got very few headshots. But we lived, and that's what matters. I was gonna say, if that's another, like, quarter pound or flesh pound, then I'm literally on a song of the game. But thankfully, that doesn't need to happen. There's a part of me that really wants to go look around for ammo, but there's another part of me that just wants to try the boss as fast as possible, because I don't see a way that we win. <laughs> Realistically, but, you know, I want to try anyway. Let's, let's give it our best attempt that we can and hope for the best, essentially. Um, I don't... Yeah, wait, why it's not gonna work. It's gonna say, like, we have the money, but we don't have anything else. We cannot afford another medic, uh, medic gun. It would have been cool to just have on the floor. That's a nice little trick that the professionals tend to do in this game. I'm gonna be honest with you, though. I have no idea which boss would be ideal to fight on this map. I suppose we could maybe use this pillar and that one for Matriarch. So maybe this is a good arena for Matriarch here. Hans is not so, like, area-dependent. The room doesn't matter so much. You just gotta, like, watch out for his grenade barrage for the most part. And be careful not to, like, let him heal. Which is gonna be difficult. I don't know how good we are at dealing with shields with our current loadout. So that is something to keep in mind. I think we just have to accept that Kevin is gonna be a nightmare because there's so many, like, corners and, and places he could disappear in. We did get Hans, so... You know, it's kind of a fair fight. I mean, my man is bringing two machine guns. I only have one in my hand at any given time, but I also have two, so I suppose it doesn't get much fairer than this. I think we might lead with the M16 at the start of the fight, use the pillars as well, because again, we can use them as cover a little bit. Try to punish him in the crit spot. Apparently that does not block, which I'm very sad to report. And once we start taking a lot of damage, we'll just switch to the, uh, the grenade rifle. Like right now-ish, pretty much. We're baiting a lot of his attacks out, but unfortunately we are taking too much damage. Okay, let's see about that shield. I mean, we are, like, wrecking the shield. Okay, that, that actually went better than I thought. I was very worried that we would not be able to actually deal with this shield at all. I think these are actual big boy grenades, so I gotta kind of run. I am not happy about that, uh, that husk right there that spawned. Okay, so we might be able to burst his shield down right here. Not in one magazine. Thankfully, he killed the husk for us, which is kind of nice to see. I guess he heard my comment, and he was like, Yeah, I agree with you, bro. Like, that's kind of that's kind of silly. Let's not have a man with a flamethrower in this fight. I mean, we're doing this fight, like, relatively well, all things considered. I'm going to reload just real quick. I think we might maybe waited a little too long at shooting him. Oh, thank god, he didn't do the, the first, like, leap attack. I was very worried about that. He is gonna do a grenade barrage. This is more a reminder for myself. Need to heal. Oh, he, like, threw those while he was running. That's cool, that's cool. I mean, it's a little unfair, if you ask me, but... We might have him, though. He is, like, in his most dangerous state right now. That's kind of the exciting thing about Hans. He gets, like, actually harder to deal with as time goes on, but he has, like, fewer ranged attacks, which makes it maybe overall a bit more manageable. I mean, we pulled it off pretty nicely. I think I panicked, like, in a lot of parts, but, you know, the, the medic grenade rifle is a great friend in need. I'm gonna check once the stats come up, like, how we actually did. We have one single bullet. You know what? There you go. That's, that's for you, Hans. I'm glad that it was you and not somebody else, because I don't know how I would have killed the others. I'm prepared for a very underwhelming headshot number. I mean, 159 is, is I would say, out of how many kills? 173? Like, that's pretty bad. Considering, you know, there were a lot of bloats that don't die in a single hit, for sure. How do we do in terms of the daily? We need one more alpha clot. Well, you know what that means. You know what that means. We're gonna pick a map. Any map. Let's go to Elysium. It's a fun one. Incidentally, it's another event map. I think this one was for a Christmas update. And it's if somebody can explain to me what the hell Elysium has to do with Christmas, like, I'm all ears. If, if you need to make a two-and-a-half-hour video essay about the significance of the starting area here, like, please, please, en enlighten me. I am, I am all ears. Like, I will just, you know, strap in, grab, like, some popcorn and some drinks, and I'll watch the entire thing in one sitting. Like, I'll record myself watching your thing, if you want to doubt me. Like, I won't even take bathroom breaks. It's going to be a little difficult and possibly not good for my health, mental or otherwise, but I'll do it. I just I just want to understand. 
It's not even that I want to talk, I just want to understand. I do like this map, it is a lot of fun. It is one of those maps that I think was made more with Endless in mind, because uh, it has like a teleport mechanic. Well, sometimes the level changes, essentially. I think it's every third level, or every second. I can't, like, quite recall. No, it is every second, because you do fight the boss in, like, this arena. Which is very nice, actually. This used to be kind of a crappy, and like, crappy zone to begin with. Because you would never get ammo. Uh, and now I think it's kind of the opposite, where it gives so much ammo. Like, look, we just look to the left there a little, and there's, like, three ammo boxes. Just, you know, blinking green everywhere. We might as well take them. If, if you play a perk that normally doesn't change his gun for Wave 2, there are a few that, you know, do that for, like, the economy. Well, for your own economy, basically, to save some cash. Uh, then it's quite good, because you essentially can do, like, a, an entire wave and just run around, not care, and then do another wave and save a lot of dosh in the process. They, they sometimes get stuck on that, like, pillar over there. Well, I guess you could call it a pillar. It's more like a beam, really. But yeah, now they've, they've added all of these things where ammo spawns, and it's it's quite nice. Uh, as you do the map, actually, a lot of it changes too. Like, right now it's kind of wide open and very ill-suited for a boss fight, in my opinion. But later on, as we do more, more and more areas, it eventually brings stuff over from the zones that we do, essentially. So that's kind of fun, too. Like, you do a swamp area, and you get, like, poison spewers. If you get super lucky, slash play endless, then you can also open up this thing. You gotta go to one of the zones, pick up like four books. Um, it opens this thing up and there's a lever, and then it takes you to an area, which again used to be an objective to, to even get there. I think it's the, it's the Loremaster arena, I'm not really sure. The library, something like that. Uh, the one problem with it, it's very cool to like get the books and do all of that. The problem is the area just really sucks. <laughs> like it's one of the worst areas. I might be biased though, because every single time uh, I would go there. We would usually get on on endless at least uh, an immediate husk wave, and I hate husk waves, dude. It's it's some of the worst shit in the game. It's kind of a wide open area as well, so they have a lot of opportunities to shoot you. Which again, I'm not very big, like I'm not a huge fan of it. Essentially, I mean, we could get the carbine rifle, and might be the idea. To, to do that, because I still see some ammo boxes. Normally, I wouldn't get a gun so expensive without being able to afford some ammo for it, but again, we can kind of abuse the fact that this map is very generous with the ammo and uh, make, the bo make the most of it. The other cool thing is, I believe we did all of that without even getting hit once, which is very lucky, and I mean, this is a map that kind of allows for that because it's more wide open. Wave 1, you have zero ranged enemies, so you have nothing to worry about. As long as, you know, you keep your wits about you, you should be fine, which we did successfully. I'm so, so happy about these ammo boxes, you don't even know. I could not afford this much ammo for this gun. Like, ever. But now we have it. it they're going to despawn, like, right now. And as you can see, we're about to teleport. I, but I do think that we now have every single one of our dailies done. Oh, you love to see it. You love to see the check marks. So this is the poison part of the map that I was talking about. It's It doesn't look bad, I just hate the filter. Like, it's genuinely... The filter is the thing that makes this actually, like, pretty annoying. It's just not, like, the most fun. Because it seems like you're constantly vomited on by a bloat. And that's, like, not fun at the best of times. And, like, it doesn't even need to happen on this map for it to look like that. I'm just missing every single shot, by the way. I'm not really sure what's going on. It's been a while since I've used this gun. But it is a good one in terms of damage. And I mean, needless to say, it is a higher tier gun than normally what we can afford. So it's always good to be able to get a trade like that. Well, trade. Really, an opportunity more like. Can't remember how quickly it deals with the blows, but apparently it's it's pretty good. Yeah, they do spawn on the other side as well. Don't think there was a way to escape that scream in that situation. Let's just ride the knockback a little bit, try to get to safety. I'm not really sure what that was. I felt like I got pulled, but it's all like gore fasts and stuff, so it should not be possible for them to pull me. Kind of uncertain what happened there, because I thought maybe I got grabbed by something, but there was nothing there to grab me. I guess maybe I'll check back in the video and see. Perhaps something did grab me, and you know, I just got insta-killed by the, the large horde of, of gore fasts. Always a possibility. Speaking of, there's a lot of gore fasts and gore fiends, have you noticed? Didn't know any better. I would say this is one of those gore fast waves in Endless. But it is not. 
I will say the carbine rifle, like, it makes makes a, for a very good weapon because it deals with the gore fiends, and I hate those things so much as commando. They're so tanky against assault rifles, it's actually frustrating at the best of times. I believe the last four guys might just actually be gore fiends. Oh, those are gore fast. I don't see the fiends if they are still present. Oh my god, it only took the entire wave, but we learned how to aim with this thing. Amazing. I mean, look, the iron sight on this thing is not the best. Let's let's be real. Like, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings if if you're the the artist behind these iron sights. I'm sure they're very true to life, but holy crap, you can't see anything. And look, we now have poison spewers. Are they good for anything? No, they actually poison you. So you got to be careful with those. It's one of the worst possible things you could actually get, to be honest with you. But we have them anyway. You know, we could, we don't need to complain about that. It's going to be very boring. But I think we are just going to get the, the grenade rifle, the medic grenade rifle, because it's so good. I'm a big fan of this. I'm a big fan of all of this. I will get grenades, because I believe that uh, a flesh pound is most likely going to happen. Now again, if you're a really smart boy, which I was not, uh, you would have remembered from literally three minutes ago that there's a lot of ammo in this map, and you would have saved mm, quite a bit of money, actually, because all of these give, I believe, one or two grenades for the grenade rifle, and also for me, so I really could have just basically gotten a full loadout without having to, to fill this thing with my own money. But that's okay. I was lost in the sauce. I think it's fine. We, we saw before that it doesn't matter so much because in terms of weight, we're only able to afford a single upgrade anyway. I feel very vindicated because there is actually a flesh pound. So I don't know why I feel vindicated because it's wave three, like something big was guaranteed to come and try to murder us. But still, I feel very smart. Even though I am not. Okay, so he raged. That's important information. That is good to know. Can we juke him with this? No, he's too fast. He is a little calmed down. Let's let's give him a reason to be mad. Let's throw a grenade at him. I think we're about to, you know, down him. There we go. Probably not the only one we'll have this wave, but that is fine. I don't want to deal with those guys over there. Just, just poison him. Oh, that's a husk, I believe, from the sounds of it. Could be wrong, though. I guess there's no ammo in this spot. That's kind of why I was coming over here. I will mention that the poison stuff actually poisons the Zeds as well. It's just, you know, poison damage is, like, not the best. You can do some stuff with it if you're playing, like, actual medic, and you make a build for it. You you take the, uh, the bonus to just damage in general with medic, and it can be kind of useful. I would assume, I'm going to be honest, I've never played Medic outside of playing it with people. This is very important to me. Which is why I wasted like 3 ammo on it. I love dodging those, but really the solution is, is to kill them instead of just making sick dodges. But I'm having too much fun pretending that this is like, I don't know, a spectacle fighter. Plus, I think that guy killed at least one the Gorfine for us so far. So he's kind of on my team. He's a friend. He's he's considered a friend until he, like, nails me with one of those shots, and then I'll be so mad. The iron sight time on this thing is, like, incredible, by the way. I'm, I'm wasting my time, like, actually, you know, making the animation <laughs> instead of shooting, but... Well, doing the animation, if anything, but, but still, it's so fast. Can't remember if they care about poison, but we're, we'll give it some poison. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. And now they're on fire. You see, you see that husk is actually my best friend. Like pretty much the two of us with just like a husk cannon on his part, and with a single medic grenade eliminated like three bloats, man. That's teamwork. That makes the dream work. And he's still trying to murder me, but he's actually just trying to help me, really. It's just like 4,000 IQ 4D chests that you're witnessing right now, in motion. I thought maybe they were doing infighting. Maybe they are? Let's see. Oh yeah, they are. They are. Let's let's see. Can my friend win against a bloat with no with no health at all? Probably. Probably, considering that the bloat has the speed of a snail. And this man clearly did did like some physical education in his uh, college days. Like look at that. He's got he's got some momentum. We actually poisoned him, and all it took was all of our armor and a lot of our health in order to do so. Which means it was definitely not worth it. Like, look at his health. It doesn't even budge from the poison. Well, I killed my friend. 
But I also killed the guy that was trying to kill him. Does that count as, like, avenging your friend? I guess avenging him would mean that I kill myself now, but I'm not ready to do that. So we're not going to be doing that. Once again, we can do the same boring thing we just did, which is grab the M16, get that autofill, because again, I refuse to run around for ammo. And you know what? This time I'm going to say it's because of efficiency. This time I'm going to claim it's so that we can, you know, make this go a little faster, even though it's entirely wrong. Interestingly enough, they didn't despawn this time. So I could still potentially make the argument that I could have grabbed those. And really, I should have, because from an income perspective, the reasonable thing would have been to actually do that. But I can't be, I can't be arsed to do that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I think this is tonight's first EDAR. I would just bag them and tag them. On, on like this map, playing Commando is quite a bit of fun. It's, it's kind of wide open in most of the areas. So you get to just have a good time, like, lining shots up, getting those sweet headshots, not not panicking, which is a very good thing when you're playing Commando, to not not constantly be checking around and, and behind yourself, and you're like, oh god, oh god, are they, are they gonna kill me? And I mean, they want to. If you give them the opportunity, they will, still. Even on this map, they're relentless. But as you can see, we're relying less on the, the grenades from the medic gun and more the actual shooting part of it. Simply because we can line up shots. And the thing is, if you're a good enough player, which I am definitely not, then this is like a non-issue because you can just line these shots up like no problem. You can just hit fire until the, the cows come home. I can't do that. Not with the fully, fully automatic stuff. Maybe in, with the semi-auto stuff, but I'm going to be honest with you, even though probably semi-auto is the way to go with this perk, uh, I still prefer like full auto. It's just more fun. Oh, so we got two scrakes this time. It's kind of good, though, because we can definitely manage them, and I think we can avoid them raging for the time being. There's also no husks, so I don't think they're going to be taking any friendly fire damage. We can actually, like, decide the order of operations here. And I just want to clear every single thing out. We have plenty of ammo. Let's, let's just go for it, man. Yeah, it's insane how much damage this thing deals. And this is, like... I mean, it makes sense. It is like a high, high tier weapon, but still, it's so surprising. So, so many of the the other assault rifles kind of don't feel like assault rifles from other games because in in Killing Floor, it's kind of just actually a generalist weapon. In a lot of other like Call of Duty titles and stuff, they're the go to weapon. You would take that any day of the week because it's so good. Why are there two arrows? That was confusing. Again, reasonable thing to do here would be to like run and grab everything. I believe with almost 3,000 dosh, though, in the pocket, we should be fine because we're just really looking to upgrade this thing. And I guess we could make an argument to buying another one, but I don't really see the point. We might actually use this a little bit more. In terms of bosses, um, funnily enough, this arena kind of works for everybody. So let's let's just see who we get. We don't really want to use the, the poison towers as cover, if at all possible. Oh, and we got these sweet, like, freezing, like, freezy majigs. Because we just did the, uh, the, the zone with no floor. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Again, if you have a two and a half hour video essay about the significance of this map, then please send it to me. I am just begging, like, for the location of your video essay through text right now. So it's Abomination with uh, Commando. I have no idea how this is gonna go. I think normally what you would try to do is, like, get his armor off with the bullets and then kind of focus on dealing more um, area damage with the grenades, but I'm not doing that right now because it seems like what the thinking man would do when I'm not the thinking man. I'm a dumb man. We got one of his armor pieces off. He's probably gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, he's, he's bound to do the sucky attack and just, like, deal some damage to us. I think that's one of his attacks that got, like, buffed recently, and it's very frustrating now, I would say, to, to fight against him as a consequence. He does it more consistently, he does it, like, just better, essentially. You could say he's better at sucking, and I mean, they didn't put that in the patch notes, but I think they wanted to. We, we all know they were thinking it, like... The Abomination spawn are easier to kill now, so, you know, I, I can't say that it's all bad. Like, they, they did some changes that benefit the player, because the, the trash that he spawns is a little, like, easier to manage now. I also incidentally think now would be a good time to switch to this thing, because I believe he actually takes a surprising amount of damage from poison, at least with the heal thrower. 
That's probably just the buffed heal thrower, though, now that I'm thinking about it. Well, buffed. I mean, when, you know, you heal someone with medic, you gain buffs, and then you also apply those to yourself. And the heal thrower becomes quite a good, like, weapon against this boss when, when it has all of those things going for it. So those guys are just stuck. You know what? I don't want to deal with them. Let's just do that. Let, let's see the damage on this thing. I mean, the bullets deal a lot more, realistically, which makes sense. I mean, it's it's a bullet, and the, the other thing is just gas. Is it good against the, the Abomination spawn? Mm, no. No, it is not good against the Abomination spawn. Again, that's valuable intel. It's good to know. We got a little close there with 71 health. Needed to remember we had 125, so that is actually pretty close, but we pulled it off. We pulled it off. All it took was, you know, a good combination of guns and a map that I'm familiar with. So it's it's a, a great success. Let's let's clean this area. I mean, you know, you gotta make sure you give back the Again, if someone can tell me what the hell this place is supposed to be, I would I would love that. Cause it's very hard to make jokes about it when you don't know what it is. It it has giant chains. It's got marble, the chain marble zone. We gotta come up with a better name for that. But if you enjoyed this video, I'm very happy. And I mean if you, you didn't then I'm, I would normally say I'm very sad, but it would be a lie. So thanks for sticking around till the end, and I'll see you guys later.